Welcome. I'm Julie Bogart from Brave Writer, and I'm assuming you know what that is, but I am going to give a quick overview for those of you who are brand new to this experience, this company, this community. So my name is Julie, and I grew up in California. I had five children, and I started homeschooling them in Orange County, California, back in 1991. In 1999, we moved to Ohio. So about midway through my homeschooling career, we shifted to Ohio and completed the journey here. So I've homeschooled in two different states. My children range in age from the oldest to the youngest, nine years between the oldest and youngest. So we have gone through learning how to read five times all at five different ages. We have gone through all of the teen angst and the middler struggles and the early uh, adventures of brand new learners multiple times together in both spaces. Uh, as a home educator, I worked freelance in writing. So just so you understand a little about that background, my mother was a freelance, no, not novelist, but book writer. Uh, she has written over 70 books in her lifetime. So I grew up around publishing. And I spent time as a ghost writer, a magazine editor, and a freelance writer myself. So as I was homeschooling my children, it seemed to be apparent to me that parents struggled a lot with writing. And one of my friends invited me to help her teach her kids. And it was through that experience that I realized I had something on offer, something to say about the parent-child dynamic and how that related to growing as writers. So I began working on materials back in the late 90s and launched my company, which is today called Brave Writer, in January of 2000. Over the course of the last two decades, of course, I have spent a lot of time in the homeschool space both as a participant, somebody raising my own children, as I guess you could call it a leader, a facilitator. I've led groups. I was on the board of directors for a Charlotte Mason group here in Dayton. I've been invited to conferences all over the world, and I've had the opportunity to interface with I'm sure it is not an exaggeration now to say over 100,000 families. I mean, we've been at this a long time, and we treat or see uh, countless numbers of families every year. In that time, with my team, you know, Brave Rider went from a solo entrepreneur to a full-scale company with over 30 employees, and we are here to serve you today. During that time, during all those interfaces, I've accumulated some understanding of what it means to be a home educator. I've drawn from a variety of streams of home education, whether it's Charlotte Mason or unschooling or sort of a Ruth Beachick approach, or perhaps you're familiar with classical education or Montessori education, or somewhere in the middle of all that, an eclectic uh, experience of home education. Those rich streams that feed into our pedagogical approach to learning are all present in the work that we do in Brave Writer. In other words, we are still a part of that experience of doing the research and the thinking and the looking under the stones for more insight into what it means to bring education into the home space. One of the things that I discovered quite early on is that there was more to homeschooling than just enforcing a school routine. In other words, just setting up school at home didn't cut it. I discovered early on that children brought their natural energy and enthusiasm to life, and I could snuff it out in a heartbeat simply by requiring them to sit too long at a table doing the tedious work of workbooks. During those early years, that's when I was doing kind of the research to figure out what it meant to be a learner and what it meant to be a parent who facilitated that learning. So in addition to understanding the transaction between parent and child to cause learning to occur, I also discovered that I was a parent. I didn't have the luxury of being a teacher at school for somebody else's kids and then coming home and just being mom to my children. I was juggling these two roles, 
parent and educator, and they seemed like they could not be differentiated. For my children, parent and educator were the same woman with the same personality, with the same proclivities towards my skill set, you know, spontaneity, rich language life, uh, a love of field trips and kinesthetic learning, combined with my limits. Maybe I wasn't as big a planner as some other home educators. Maybe I wasn't as strong in math as I was in English. These were the features of me that my children got to know as we spent time together. And so I discovered that I had to become both an educator and a human being who was also a parent, all mixed together. And to be the best at those two main jobs, educating and parenting, I needed some self-care. I needed to develop into that adult that I envisioned back in my teens or in college. It wasn't on hold. I wasn't going to save my adulthood for my husband's retirement or someday down the road in my late 40s and 50s. Instead, what I was going to do is I was going to evolve who I was alongside my children's learning journey. So the way I like to talk about it is this. When you are becoming a home educator, you are embarking on three aspects of your identity as a person. The first one is an effective educator. The second one is a compassionate parent. And the third one is an awesome adult. So effective educator, compassionate parent, awesome adult. These three aspects of you, of who you are, are braided together to create the home environment that causes the magic of learning to occur in your family. And the reason this is important for you to think about is everything I'm going to share today about the Brave Learner Home is organized around the idea that we are trying to grow as educators, that we want to be not just parents, but compassionate parents, parents who have an understanding of what it means to be a little child navigating life, navigating schoolwork, living in a family. So a parent who is self-aware and also child-aware. But then the third component, the one that we often overlook, is the awesome adult. That means the person who provides the vision of adulthood your children aspire to have. So let me talk about that for a minute, and then we'll get right into the PowerPoint where we take a guided tour of what we call the Brave Learner Home. An awesome adult means this. Imagine your child growing up with a mother who is a martyr, somebody who says, I can put my life on hold to ensure that you have a good life. What you wind up displaying to your child is somebody who sees adulthood as a burden, as weary responsibility, always devoted to the growth and joy of other people. And when your kids pick up this sort of frame of reference for who you are, that your well-being depends on their success or their joy or their opportunities, they start to think, oh no, this is the limit of the joy in my life because once I become an adult, I'm going to have to buckle in for this difficult task of getting children to do the things I wish I could do. <laughs> I remember one mom saying to me specifically that her daughter told her when she graduated from high school, homeschool high school, I don't want to homeschool because you always seemed so tired and sad. It seemed like your life was a struggle getting us to do what, we want, what you wanted us to do. That is a way of viewing homeschooling from the perspective of a child that is not accomplishing your goal. What we really want to see is for our children to look at our lives and think, wow, the good stuff really takes off once I hit adulthood. I get to use advanced tools and hang out with smart, cool people and produce things that I'm excited about because I'm grown up enough. So I know that can sound like an additional burden. You're already parenting, you're already educating, and believe me, 
the career of home education is an awesome adult journey. I mean, how many of you love history for the first time in your life? How many of you are excited to keep homeschooling because your own education is developing at such a beautiful rate, right? So I know that that is an authentic expression of your awesome adulting, just the homeschool journey alone. But what I'm asking you to take the initiative to do and what we help you learn to do is to lead, not sort of squeeze in the amazing adult you are to the backside of your life, but for it to actually be the thing that leads your homeschool. So the three again then are effective educator, compassionate parent, awesome adult. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through this brand new community we're launching called the Brave Learner Home. Up until now, we've had a community that's called the Homeschool Alliance. I developed it about six years ago now in 2014. And the goal of that space was to provide what I like to call grad school for homeschool. So we were going to hang out together each month and examine a reading, just like you might in a graduate school class where the professor has a syllabus and she picks out an article or a book or a chapter to read. And then we come to class and we have a big discussion. There's a lecture and there's chat. And then we continue writing about it and thinking about it for a few weeks. So for homeschool, I thought, my goodness, there is this plethora of material written by truly skilled, intelligent people who are talking about brain-based learning and natural learning and learning while under trauma and how to deal with sibling rivalry and new approaches to math and how to think like a historian and what to do if you want to write poetry in a way that draws in your children. I knew there was an endless supply of people like that and writings they had created that we could enjoy together. So I set up the Homeschool Alliance with that in mind. I also thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I could sort of showcase how this natural learning life looks once a month by writing a kind of lesson plan that was around an extracurricular topic that drew in the subject areas. Now, if you have my book, The Brave Learner Home, this was sort of the beginning of what became the continent of learning, this notion that you can put at the center a child's passions or a, a, an interest area or a hobby and still discover the tentacles that lead into the school subjects. So early on in the Alliance, we had two things that were new every month. We had a reading that we would discuss. I would lead a monthly webinar or I would record an audio lecture and then we would go into our discussion board and chat about what we were learning from that reading. And then at the same time, there was a space we called the One Thing Challenge. And I would write sort of a lesson plan that had three levels of challenge. So we might be talking about the weather and I would have the easy peasy level, the moderate level and the advanced level. And I would link to resources and I would give suggested activities and tell you, okay, go for it. If you are at the easy peasy level, it'll be very simple to do. If you want to try the moderate level, a little more involvement and the advanced level might even turn into like a science fair level project. It didn't matter to me which level you did. I was trying to give you some opportunities to start dipping your toe in the water of this natural learning. Once you completed any of the tasks in a month, however, you got to reward yourself with a badge that represented the symbol of your achievement. Just like you might be in a video game and you get, you know, new armor or a little more life or something that gave you an opportunity to pat yourself on the back for a great achievement. So when we began the Homeschool Alliance, those were the two primary planks and we had a discussion board. Over time, We've brought more people into the space. Um, we have a coaching notebook that I will show you in just a moment. We have multiple coaches now. There's me and three other women who have grown children who help to coach you in 
the um, practice of being a home educator. And this is personal. You write your, you know, complaint, and then a coach will come in and actually give you very long feedback that's detailed and particular to you. But here's what's even more awesome. It's not just coaches. Your peer community will also be giving you the tips and tricks they're learning in the saddle while they're homeschooling right now. And those master classes where we were discussing an article a month, they circulate through effective education, compassionate parenting, and becoming an awesome adult. So you can expect all of that when you are in that space. Here's what's changed. And then we're going to go through a PowerPoint where you will see it all. Yes, the, the Homeschool Alliance now is becoming a part of a bigger umbrella. So the Homeschool Alliance is not going away. Everything I just shared is inside the Brave Learner home. But here's what happened. I wrote a book, and the book is called The Brave Learner. And we realized that that is sort of the umbrella over everything we do in Brave Writer. We are brave learners, all of us, not just our children, but the parents are bravely learning as well. And our products, which we're going to look a little bit, bit at today, that will allow you to join uh, the Brave Learner Home for free. We have been coaching using a Facebook group for people who purchase our program. And it dawned on us, you know, with all the mess that Facebook can be, you know, you're sort of off in this space where you're distracted from your own best interests, right? You're just scrolling through and seeing pictures and political posts and all that. We felt it might be a better use of our sort of space that we've built if we brought that coaching in-house and allowed even non-Facebook users to access it. So now inside the Brave Learner Home, you are going to find the Homeschool Alliance, still even called by that name, the Homeschool Coaching Space, and Brave Writer Coaching for products and classes and any questions you have about writing. Both of those now will be housed in one space called the Brave Learner Home. Does this make sense? I hope this helps, but don't worry. I'm about to walk us through it. I just wanted to give you an overview before we started. And I think sometimes PowerPoint obscures the personal connection. So I wanted you to see my face, hear my voice and get a sense of it. So the vision is this, we want you in our space. When we, when you invest in Brave Writer, we want to invest back in you. You can think of the Brave Learner Home as sort of a parenting education and writing coach manual, living and breathing. Um, I don't know if you remember this, uh, but I've often shared that when my oldest son was in fourth grade, we were using Saxon math. And I got to like chapter four and I suddenly had a question. So I went to the teacher's manual and I read the explanation and I didn't understand it. And then I'm like marching around the house. This is before the internet. And I thought, how am I going to get the answer to this question? Why doesn't Mr. Saxon just have a phone number on the back of this manual? Because I know if I called him five minutes later, I'd understand what he meant here and I could get back to teaching. Instead, I'm stalled out. I can't figure out how to move forward and there's nobody to call. So from the beginning, when I started Brave Writer, the business phone was my cell phone. Well, first it was my home phone because I didn't have a cell phone. Then it became my cell phone. And until 18 months or two years ago, it still was because I wanted to answer the phone and answer the question. I wanted to be the living and breathing answer key, teacher's manual, guide to get you back to homeschooling so you didn't get stuck or eject yourself from the program just because there was one concept that wasn't clear. So we've had a very active email support system. We have brave writer Facebook groups. Um, yes, I wanted to be the Mr. Saxon of brave writer. Let's say Ms. Saxon. Okay, let's go for the feminist uh, perspective here. But yes, I really wanted to make sure that people had what they needed. And if you go to my website, my blog, my YouTube channel, my podcast, I think you can tell <laughs> that this has been my mission from day one. 
So over the years, we started looking at how you all spend your money. And it occurred to us from the feedback we got that you were feeling like you had to make triage decisions. Do I invest a chunk of money in my development as a home educator, or do I spend that money on curriculum? How many of you have had that question mark in your head? I'd love to join the Alliance, but I really need to put my kids in a writing class. Is that what everybody feels? I mean, that's what I would have felt. I had five kids. We were living on, at one point, $29,000 a year. We had no money. I understand this. So <laughs> I said to my team, can we eliminate that part? Is there a way for them to get the support they need for the programs they're already buying instead of requiring them to make this decision or choose both and then feel like they can't buy a math program? And so initially we thought, okay, what we're going to do is we'll do it annually. You'll buy this program and for a year you'll have membership. And honestly, it just didn't sit right with me because first of all, maybe you don't want to buy something from Brave Writer every year. I don't know that, but I do know at the point that you join us, you want support and you want it for as long as you need it. And what if you buy one of our programs and it takes you two or three years to use it up? Do you just get kicked out after a year? It just, it didn't make sense to me. So what we decided is this, we will invest in you when you invest in us. So if you buy our program and we'll discuss the details of that, you have lifetime membership, not just six months, not just a year, not just a re-up. And we're gonna try this for a year. So this is from May till May of 2021. We're going to see if the community thrives, if it's fiscally responsible for us. We are excited about it, and we believe that it is a complete flip on the notion of membership communities. You know, I was just reading today, in fact, I got invited to join a business space that's a membership community, $249 a month and $3,000 a year. Like, what? I don't know. There is something about coaching where I want it to be a constitutive part of what you've already invested in, right? That's what I want it to feel like. So we're taking this leap of faith and we are flipping the script on what it says in the space about, you know, membership communities. And we're going to test this with you and we're going to grow together. And this space is going to become more and more what you want it to be not just what we want it to be. And you are going to build relationships with each other. And when we do conferences, it will be for the members of the community because you will know each other and it will be an opportunity for you to come together and reinforce those bonds. So let's take a look now at this membership community that I've been talking about. And I want you to know, we're throwing a lot of resources at this. We are designing gifts for you. I'll share a little bit about that. We have staff, dedicated staff, that will be working in that space. In other words, this is not just like a discussion board and nobody's there. And it's not like I will just have a couple hours a week and I'm the only person you wanted to hear from anyway and you just have to hope that I picked your post. No, we have a team and the team is going to be actively involved every day of the week, involved with you, okay? So that's the goal of the Brave Learner Home. So let me share my screen now and let's get at it. The Brave Learner Home is a non-sectarian space. It is not organized by worldview, politics, religion, philosophical homeschooling perspective. You are welcome as you are. That means that we do have people from every background in our space and they are completely welcome and comfortable here. So if you are looking for a community that is aligned with your exact religious beliefs or your political beliefs, this will not be a space you want to be a part of. If you want to be in a community where our primary focus and our shared ideals are homeschooling, learning at, at home, learning with your family, this is the place for you. We love that it is such an intersectional and diverse space because we learn from so many perspectives. It creates this amazing opportunity for us to learn from each other. 
So the Brave Learner Home, first and foremost, welcomes anyone, husbands, wives, partners, single parents. The only people not in the space directly are children, unless we invite them for some kind of a workshop or a webinar, and we do that sometimes. But the members are adults from all backgrounds all over the globe, and we love that about it. Home is where the learning is. And the reason that we call this the Brave Learner Home is because we are interested in bravely learning about learning and what that looks like in the home space. So those of you who are brand new COVID schoolers, welcome. Those of you who are launching out for the very first time, welcome. What you are going to learn in this space is how to create a home that leads to the kind of learning that you are excited about for your kids. So this is not reproducing school at home. This is rebuilding the learning experience from the home up. Why join the Brave Learner Home? What is its purpose? Why would we have you join? Well, here's why. You might wanna grow as an educator. Maybe you're exhausted from doing everything all by yourself. How many of you have that feeling? It's like, I wish I had some help here. When I need a new idea, when I need a lesson plan, when I need a friend, when I want someone to help me think about what I could possibly do with my children during this you know, sibling rivalry fight, that's what this space is. It is your chief space to come to consult with others and get answers to those questions. Maybe you wish for guidance from homeschool veterans who've already raised their children to adulthood. I know that was pretty primary and important to me back when I was first homeschooling. So I was constantly asking parents like, what did you regret? What do you wish you had done differently? What things are you glad you did? In our space, the people who are coaches, Jeannie, Stephanie, another mom named Heather, we've all been through at least the full 12 years of raising a child and more in education. So you can experience that kind of dedicated sort of wisdom and veteran practice to guide you in addition to the community that you're a part of. You can join because you're ready to put your dreams into practice. Sometimes we have this shiny vision of what homeschooling could be, but we are nervous about taking the steps toward it. So we keep going back to what's familiar and comfortable in our space. We're gonna walk you through practices and tools that give you the courage to take those baby steps toward the homeschool that you imagine. And maybe you're tired of rules and requirements for membership. I mean, I really was. Back when I was a home educator, I just wanted us to talk about learning. Now, our full personhood shows up. So someone might offer to pray for you. Someone else might recommend, you know, a meditation. Somebody else might share who they're voting for. This is part of who we are. We're not putting rules on how you can show up, but it is not a place that excludes you based on those things. That's why we call ourselves non-sectarian instead of secular. We're not enforcing secularity. We are inviting participation as a full self and making space for everyone to show up as themselves. The leadership, however, will refrain from declaring allegiances because we don't want you to feel that we are being biased when we are trying to speak with you. You want freedom to explore lots of options and decide for yourself. Maybe that's what you're looking for. You've started to read about unschooling and Montessori and classical education, and you just want a dialogue partner or hundreds <laughs> to help you sort through which pieces from which philosophies might be worth trying with which children. And then finally, maybe you just feel ready to join a community of friends and experts and coaches. These are all fellow travelers. And so we invite you to take a risk with us, especially if you are already planning to buy Brave Rider products, why wouldn't you just jump in and at least check it out and see if it's the place you wanna be? When you first come then to the Brave Learner dashboard, it is going to look something like this. Now we're making a few changes 
as we get ready. This is the current dashboard for the Homeschool Alliance. And we're gonna go through most of these icons on the dashboard, but I wanna just call your attention to a couple that will not necessarily be there in the future. So the live broadcast button is the one where the webinar comes up live and you can just click on it and go to it. We will be moving that in the brand new dashboard. And then where it says monthly Zoom chats, that is going to become our calendar of events. So all of our webinars and Zoom meetings will be located there. And then you will be able to have a place that you can always go and look and know exactly what's coming up. Now, right now, we don't have something like that set up for the Brave Learner Home. But what we do have is a calendar of events. And the staff members who are in Facebook and on Zoom are going to give you access to this now so that you can see what's coming in the first several months of the brand new Brave Learner Home starting in August. So in August, we have many webinars. We have the welcome on August 1st. We have me giving a lecture called Finding Your Path for Home Education. And I'm gonna show you something at the end of this PowerPoint that you will love uh, that is part of that webinar. And I am also building three pathways for brand new and continuing homeschoolers to take that will orient you to the Brave Learner Home and give you valuable information for wherever you are in the journey. We will also have in August a writing webinar to kick off the year and a getting started with the Dart, Arrow, and Boomerang, our three language arts programs that many of you have purchased or are about to purchase. So August is so full of amazing content. Then in September, it is officially Celebrate Melissa Wiley Month in Brave Rider. She has a book coming out and we are teaching her current brand new book and her previous book in two of our programs. And she will be coming into our, our Brave Learner space to talk to us about what it means to blend homeschooling, parenting, and your personal passions. She's a marvelous speaker, super popular with our audience. In October, we are going to have the most exciting visitor we've had in a long time, William Sixtrud. The author of The Self-Driven Child is coming to speak to us about how to promote motivation and learning in your children. This is one of our favorite books. We've taught it before, but now the author is coming and he is so excited to speak into the homeschooling space. Then in November, the beautiful Leah Bowden, who is a modern Miss Mason, Charlotte Mason leader, is going to talk to us about that vision. She comes to us from England across the pond. Jim Weiss, the storyteller, will be with us in December. And then in January, we are inviting from New Frontiers Executive Function Coaching, one of their trainers to talk to us about um, executive function in the learning experience, how you can help your children be less scattered and more on task. I know a lot of you are interested in that and how to work with your kids who have particular unique struggles in that area. So that's what's coming between August and January. So hopefully you can just download that document and start marking up your calendar and you'll know the dates. So now let's do a deep dive into each of these icons on the dashboard. The first space then that I showed you is called a master class in learning. All of us are curious to grow and learn more, just like our children. So here is the space where you are going to find the tools that help you become an effective educator, a compassionate parent, and an awesome adult. Each month, we feature a master class. So like I just shared, in October, we will have a master class on the self-driven child. It will include a reading from the book and a webinar with our guest speaker that you can attend live or watch on replay. There will be an active live chat, a Q&A, and then we will discuss it in our coaching conversation space so that you can apply your personal circumstances to what you're learning. So that's an example of what's in the master class of learning each month. 
But then, in addition to each new month, we archive in a library every month we've ever done. So at the bottom inside the masterclass page is the masterclass library. And you will see these beautifully illustrated icons, personal enrichment, science of learning, subject areas, family life, home atmosphere, ages and stages, and the Brave Learner Book Club. Those are all populated, like you see in the lower part of your screen, with every webinar and masterclass we have done in the last six years. So you know how a lot of you will write me and say, okay, I'm working through your YouTubes. Like, is there anything else I can listen to while I'm making dinner? Uh, yeah, <laughs> six years worth of material that you can listen to or watch or read that's all in this masterclass library. I'm not kidding you. I think it is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It is what I wish I had had when I was a home educator. It's what I wish I could have tapped into. Of course, the internet was not what it is today, and today it makes it quite easy to use a library like that. So the master classes are oriented towards you specifically. Then we have these one thing challenges that are the custom designed lesson plans that are ideal for you. You just log in and a lesson plan is already built for you. This is the space where you are collaborating with your child. We partner with our children to create better learning experiences and more intimate relationships. This isn't just about digesting information. It's about growing a family and a space where you are learning together. So instead of just sending you on your way, we are modeling every month what it looks like to create kind of an integrated learning experience. So when you click on the One Thing Challenge, there will be something for this month, but there is also a One Thing Challenge library. And we've broken it into these categories, arts, culture, games, nature, projects, and STEM. So when you are looking, let's say, oh gosh, I'm a very literature focused person, maybe I need something from the STEM category, you can pop in there and find it. Let's say you want to take advantage of the season change. So you click on nature, and now you see there are one thing challenges for math in nature, bees, the weather, food for thought, apples, and you can just pop into these ready-made lesson plans that look like this. So let's say you are looking in this month's and it's all about celebrating pets. You can tell what level of challenge by the stars next to the challenges. So there is an easy peasy challenge called celebrate pets. Then there is a moderate challenge called pet poetry. And then there is an advanced challenge for unusual pets. And here's what's amazing. When we write these, we consider the possibility that you don't even have a pet. We consider that you may not be in a place that has a lot of weather changes. We consider that you might not own a saw. In other words, we make sure you can do it, even if the topic seems like one that would not be natural to your family. So here's an example of the second level and what it looks like, pets in story and poetry. There are suggestions and links and ways to interact with the topic already curated for you. Once you have completed the challenge, you get to select from a group of badges that get added to your bio and user identity whenever you chat in the community conversation. So I just selected a bunch so they would show up and you can see them. But it's one of our... Um, community's favorite aspects because they build up this really long chain showing the work that they've done with their kids. It's just a tiny little bit of gamification, but it is a way to remind yourself that you're working hard. It's very easy on a blue day to think, gosh, I haven't done anything. And then you pop into the community discussion and post something and suddenly 15 of your badges show up and remind you, you're not a failure. You're actually doing a great job. And this is just not a great day. So that's what the One Thing Challenges are all about. 
the next way that we care for you then, so effective educator, learning all about the master class, becoming one of those people who knows a lot about pedagogy. One thing challenge is to help you be that compassionate parent educator that is collaborating with your kids. And then the awesome adult. What about self-care? How can we create lives of well-being through deep dives and sustained fascination? How can we be kind to ourselves and become the powerful people that are leading these homeschools? Well, that obviously is coming through self-care. Self-care is a deep part of our practice and becoming more so in the next year. Details to be revealed. But what we have currently is a year-long email that is yours for free. We give it to people who even signed up for the Alliance and quit and didn't pay. You get it for a year. We always want you to take good care of yourselves. Every Monday, you get an email that will tell you a practice you can do today to accommodate your well-being and growth. Not only that, we've been experimenting during this pandemic with some devoted check-ins where we share in an, uh, a Zoom meeting where everybody can see each other and we discuss a topic and you get to know each other and then we end with a little visualization meditation, a little guided meditation to help you deal with anxiety, stress, overwhelm, the feelings that so many of us have in homeschooling. And we are finding ways to continue that practice. So self-care is a big piece that is also growing right now in the Alliance and will grow in the Brave Learner Home. And then we have a coaching notebook. Now this will undergo a change. It's going to say Brave Writer Coaching Notebook. And it will include home education practices, which I'm about to show you. And this is where the new space is for Brave Writer Coaching, for the dart, the arrow, and the boomerang. We will be putting the webinars and the resources so that they live in this space and you can find them anytime you need them. And over the course of the year, as we do webinars and we roll out teaching tips to our community for those products, we will house them in this space so they're easy to find and use whenever you need them. Not only that, we wanna teach you how to record your achievements and give yourself credit for everything you accomplish. Inside the Alliance right now, we have practices called the narrative sketch, the scatter book, planning from behind, interval training, and seasonal schooling. These are all tools we will teach you more about over the coming year, but they already live in this space. And they are the ways that you give yourself credit and keep track of your children's progress. Those are here to stay and they are available for everyone as soon as you join. Finally, the last thing I wanna talk about and perhaps the most used portion of the site is the community coaching space. These are the discussion threads. This is where you're going to come when you wanna post a question and get responses. We currently just deal with homeschooling and parenting and adulting but we are adding a new category to the space called Brave Writer Coaching. And that's where you'll ask your questions or do show and tell about anything related to writing, literature, and language arts. It will be specific to Brave Writer, not a free-for-all where you're sharing about math programs or logic of English or some other program. We are going to dedicate that space to Brave Writer. In the community coaching, which will be called Homeschool Alliance Coaching. That's where we'll talk about homeschooling in general and other aspects of learning besides Brave Writer. Make sense? So we will have two places for you to be able to be a part of community conversation where our trained staff will come in and support you and the community will help you as well. Our members who've been a part of the Alliance have written gorgeous testimonials and I just have two of them here and I'm going to read them to you and I actually <laughs> just to show you I have a box of testimonials that is massively huge and I started going through them thinking I was going to read some but they some of them are very personal and I don't want to put anyone on the spot but what I want you to know is that this 
notion of being supported in the homeschool space with both compassion and training must feel somewhat unique because the kinds of messages we get sort of blow my mind away, blow me away. And here's two that we have permission to share. Karen Jansta, who's been with us forever, said, I genuinely believe I am stronger and wiser and have, ha have found more self-compassion since being a member of Homeschool Alliance. I've done a lot of internal work, read and listened to more things that resonate with me this past year than I can ever recall experiencing before in my adult life. It's been life-changing, life-giving. And then Stephanie Founts said this, the Homeschool Alliance could create a sea change and is in the homeschool community. The volume of wisdom, non-judgmental support, and the joy of learning for homeschooling parents that is encouraged is a game changer for any new and old homeschooler. You start with us. From our learning and support blooms a healthy homeschool from the center outward. It influences home education, family dynamics, individuals, and society the same way healthy parenting does. The Alliance is truly a gift, and I know it's a labor of love for all of you. If you are looking for a place that is that three braided chain of effective educating, compassionate parenting, and awesome adulting, this is where we do that work. And now you don't have to pay for it. You can have a free lifetime membership at the risk of sounding very markety right now. I want you to understand that I really believe in this. For those of you who remember my Periscope era, I did a daily webinar for 150 days. I only took the weekends off. Why? Because it's my joy to be involved in your lives in this way. And our team feels the same way. We want to have the coaching just be the gift we can share back into your lives. And then when you buy our program that is the curriculum, you feel good because you're buying what your children need and you are receiving what you need. That to me feels good. So here's how it works. If you purchase the dart, the arrow, or the boomerang, these are our language arts tools that teach the mechanics of writing and literature. If you buy those by Jan June 30th, so there's two weeks left, not even, for $129, you will get 10 handbooks, one per month for each level. If you buy one of those programs, you get a free lifetime membership into the Homeschool Alliance. And here's what you need to know. A year, I said the Homeschool Alliance, I mean the Brave Learner Home. Let me say that again. If you spend $129 right now, you get the Brave Learner Home, which includes the Homeschool Alliance and Brave Writer Coaching for the rest of your life. Regular price just for the Alliance was $199 per year or $25 per month. So imagine the shift in how we're valuing it. We are giving you truly a deeply valuable resource that we are putting money into and not charging you extra for. Um, and I wanna drive that point home because I think it's what makes this experience so valuable. You can, in other words, relax. You get in there and you don't have to do everything in a month because you're trying to get the most out of it for $25. You don't have to feel like six months into your year that you didn't use it well enough. You can actually say to yourself, you know what? For these six months, I'm too busy. I'm not gonna spend any time there. And know when you come back, you still have a lifetime of membership waiting for you. Imagine a library where you had to pay monthly or annually. Wouldn't you feel a lot of pressure to read a lot of books and you'd be coming in saying, hey librarian, tell me how to maximize my value for this library. But that's not how a library is. A library is stocked to the gills with more than you will ever read or check out. And because you can go anytime, you never feel pressure to use it up. That's how I want you to think about the Brave Learner Home.
It is there for you when you need it. And you can leave it behind during seasons of life like cancer treatment, having a baby, moving across country, adopting a child. You can give yourself permission to take breaks and come back to really deep dive into one topic and not feel guilty that you aren't also deep diving into another one. Got it? So what are these products, the dart, the arrow, and the boomerang? Well, they are programs that teach 10 books in a year. The dart is for eight to 10 year olds, the arrow is for 11 and 12 year olds, and the boomerang is for 13 and 14 year olds. And these are the books you will be reading. Get ready to take some screenshots because I have them listed for you. So for ages eight to 10, this is August through May of 2020 through 2021. Charlotte's Web, The Prairie Thief, Finn Family Moomin Troll, The House at Pooh Corner, The Mouse and the Motorcycle, Mr. Popper's Penguins, Sarah Plain and Tall, The Trumpet of the Swan, my all-time favorite children's book, The Year of the Dog, and Encyclopedia Brown. The Dart, ladies and gentlemen. The Arrow is for 11 and 12 year olds. The Wild Robot Escapes, Melissa Wiley's brand new book, The Nerviest Girl in the World, Fish in a Tree, Children of the Longhouse, Green Glass House, Pax, The People Could Fly, Wings of Fire, Book One, A Mall Unbound, and Manana Land. The Arrow. The Boomerang is for 13 and 14 year olds. We kick it off with Emma, A Long Way Home, A Memoir, The Hound of Baskervilles, Sherlock Holmes, How I Became a Ghost, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, how many Dorothys are reading right now? Other Words for Home, Blink, They Called Us en Enemy, that's George Takai's graphic novel about Japanese intern camps, The Play, Our Town, and we wind it up with Refugee in May. These books provide the resource, the rich literature that we use to teach your kids the mechanics of writing. And this is what the programs look like. Now I have them sitting next to me and I will pull them out and share them with you once we get through the PowerPoint. But these are brand new designs. You will notice the similar color scheme, our ladies and gentlemen and families that have been drawn and created specifically for Brave Rider throughout the products. And there is overlap between the Brave Learner Home and these products. And we'll take another look in a minute. So if you purchase one of these products, you know, you're gonna purchase the dart and you'll get all 10 starting August 1st, each month of the year, one of these will roll out. In addition, you will automatically be added to the Brave Learner Home. Now, what happens if you don't want the dart, the arrow, or the boomerang? Is there another way to join? Absolutely. Starting July 1st, we have a new offer rolling out. It's just it won't be as inexpensive. But I am going to tell you right now what that will be just to let you know the difference in price. So we will be making a new offer in July that will include fall classes and also that will include a purchase that is at $199 level. So if you know that you're gonna do a fall class and you don't mind waiting, you can wait for that. But if you are interested in the least expensive way to get into the Brave Learner Home, it's this month, Dart, Arrow, or Boomerang programs, okay? When you join, you'll receive something we are creating called the six week on-ramp to homeschooling. You will be amazed. I just saw the um, mock-up and I almost cried. It is so beautiful. It's got all the preparation you need and four weeks worth of homeschooling laid out for you in a progressive way where we start with heavy handholding and by the end of the four weeks, you're ready to take over from there. It's going to showcase you a real lived experience, not just a schedule that you can never implement. Uh, and it's beautifully designed. It has sort of that bullet journal-y feel, so there's lots of space for your own note-taking. And that is just free for becoming a member of the Brave Learner Home on top of everything else. So let me just recap. 
Go to bravewriter.com slash special dash offer for all the details. Purchase a qualifying program for $129 by June 30th and you'll be in. You will join us starting on August 1st in the new space, but until then, we have a Facebook group where we're talking about the Brave Writer lifestyle and getting to know each other, and there are already hundreds and hundreds of people in there if you want to join us. We cannot wait to meet you, to get to know you, to help you have the homeschool that you really want. All right, so let me come back now. It has been an hour. I like to honor the hour length, so what we're going to do now is invite anyone who wanted to leave to leave and know that the replay will be available for you. But I am now going to just review what we did before two weeks ago, a little bit of what these programs are for those who missed last time or just have some new questions, okay? Uh, because we really want you to be comfortable. And I know some of you have very small children. And you're saying, okay, I have a four-year-old. Is it worth it to buy the dart just so that I can get into the Brave Learner home? Here's my answer to that question. Yes. You are going to want to read these books to your children. And these products in the newly redesigned are going to live in this form for a long time. We are making a huge investment right now, designing all of our products from scratch and revising all of the ones that are in the old format. So you can make a confident purchase, even if your child is not at reading age, and know that all these products will be there for you. Why do I recommend that? Because this is the bargain basement price to be in the Brave Learner home, and I can't promise you that it will be this way a year from now because it's an experiment. We will let you know in a year if this was a great experiment for us. Um, we don't do Facebook. Is there another place? Let me explain this. The Facebook group is just a, a narthex. It's a foyer. It is not the Brave Learner Home. The Brave Learner Home is on the Brave Writer website. Oh, and I meant to say, it has an app, and the app will be released for Android and iOS. So you'll be able to do this while you're, you know, hanging out at your child's ballet practice, right? So there will be an app. It will not be on Facebook. But we do, yes, the app for our members, they're already using it and it's beautiful. What we are doing just during this short period of time, two months between when we announced the Brave Learner Home and when people were joining, is we have a Facebook group for people who are on Facebook. You're not missing anything. We are going over the Brave Writer lifestyle, which already exists for free on my website and you can tour that on your own. But we're just playing around with it for a few weeks just to hang out with each other, okay? Yes. Right, you don't have to use anymore. So literally, there's an app, we have it on our website, and all of this is our gift to you. And it's a huge investment, you should know. I don't know that about Canadian Apple Store. I, I would hope so. Um, that's a great question, Jeannie, write that down. We can ask our developer about that. Oh, somebody has it in Canada. Well, there's the answer to that. So yes, you can get it through the Canadian App Store. Um, so here's what I want to do now, is go through these briefly. So the dart is for your youngest kids. And what you will see is that each week there is a passage that we select, and this is true in the arrow and boomerang too. There is a passage we select, and then we discuss its properties. So we talk about end marks and capital letters and apostrophes and dialogue. And we give you the parent language for talking about those things. And then we give you a section. Don't you love these little ginger guys? They crack me up. Um, we give you a section that helps you talk about spelling or dialogue punctuation with your children so that they know what to do. And then each week, we spotlight either punctuation or grammar, and we pick one feature. So in the Charlotte's Web, which is the first dart that we're doing, we talk about punctuation in general, cracking the code, right? And we talk about curves, dots, lines, dot and curve, line and dot, curve, line and dot. So we're actually helping you crack the code of what punctuation is, 
and you're using language your child can understand, and then we're giving you activities to learn it, to carry it out. So here's the activity. And each arrow is like this, each dart is like this, each boomerang is designed in this manner. Yes, all of this starts on August 1st. So the brand new dart, the brand new arrow, the brand new boomerang. We have a whole team of people who are writing them. Um, we've already got the first months already underway and ready to go. The dart is for children who read, but are not mature. So they might be reading just those Bob books or the beginning readers, or they're reading, you know, chapter books even, because it's age eight to 10. But we are helping them learn how to manage the punctuation, spelling, and handwriting demands of writing at that level. You can purchase a bundle, like our bundles include the dart, the arrow, and the boomerang. If you purchase the bundle, obviously you're in. You don't have to purchase this a la carte. It's a part of a bundle, you're in, okay? The deal applies to the partnership writing bundle, the jot it down writing bundle, the faltering ownership bundle, the transition to ownership bundle. It applies to all the bundles, okay? So feel free to do that. Don just put all the links in case you wanna go there uh, directly from Zoom. The, okay, so I'm glad someone brought up the wand. That's something I'll be talking about on the first. A first grader can absolutely do the wand. If you are planning to buy the wand, I recommend waiting for July 1st because the new deal starts then and you're gonna want that purchase to go towards that deal. The wand is not included in the June offer and there's a reason for that that I cannot explain until July 1st. So just know that going forward. Um, you do not get an update for the quiver because the quiver is becoming the dart and the dart is being rewritten from scratch. How do I know? Because I'm rewriting it. Another deal in July, yes. So June is the cheapest, $129. Purchase the dart arrow or the boomerang or buy it in the bundle and you're in. Starting on July 1st, that offer is gonna cost you more. That's what's happening. Um, but for some of you that might be appropriate because you're buying the wand bundle in the jot it down for instance. So just buy it then so that you will take advantage of the new deal. And then there will be something related to the fall uh, classes, but we'll talk about that on the first, one offer at a time. The pouch of boomerangs is no longer a boomerang level. We folded them back into the boomerangs and what we've done is we've changed the age ranges. So eight to 10, our arrow used to cover like eight to 12 years old. So what we've done now is the dart is eight to 10, the arrow is 11 and 12, which used to be that sort of pouch level. And then the boomerang is 13, 14. And then coming in January of 2021 will be the slingshot, which is for 15 to 18 year olds, upper high school. Okay, the app is available to Homeschool Alliance members right now. And for the Brave Learner Home, you will have access starting the 1st of August. Yep. Um, Allison, I'm so sorry you're confused. I don't want you to be confused. Let me scroll up and see if I can see your question. Okay, let me explain one more time. We have currently four levels of products. We have uh, up until this year, we had the wand, which taught reading. We had the quiver of arrows, which was for early readers. We had the arrow. Then we had the pouch of boomerangs, which was sort of like eighth, ninth grade. And then we had the boomerang, which was supposed to be high school. We are reorganizing. So the wand is the lowest level that's for reading. But then now we have the dart. The dart is replacing the quiver of arrows. It is no longer a subset of the arrow. It's going to be its own program. It will have new books every year starting next year. And the dart is for early readers, eight to 10 years old. Then the arrow is covering that sort of late elementary, early junior high space, 11 and 12 year olds, which is kind of what the pouch was trying to do, right? The pouch was like 12, 13, 14. We just didn't like that. It was so confusing to our customers. So the arrow now 
based on the literature, this is all dr driven by the kinds of books available at these levels. We were finding that with eight to 12 for the arrow, an eight-year-old was not mature enough for some of the themes for the arrow level. So we created a level that's for eight to 10 so that the mature themes could be saved for the 11 and 12-year-olds. And now the boomerang is where it should be, 13 and 14-year-olds, eighth and ninth grade, maybe a 10th grader. And then we are re, you know, reviving the slingshot, which we retired years ago for upper high school. And yes, that will have classic works of fiction that you want to put on a transcript for going to college. So I hope all that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Yes, our, um, the Alliance app is for Android and iOS. We are building the Android right now. Currently, it's only available in iOS. And yes, an 11-year-old can use the Dart. These age ranges are just meant as suggestions. If you have a new reader at age 10 or 11, start with the Dart. It is plenty rich enough. The app is called the Brave Learner Home. Yep. Okay, I hope that covered. So I'm happy to take any questions. Um, Brave Learner Home. Thank you, Kelly. That's correct. Thank you. So let me check the Q&A folder here and see. Oh. <laughs> Kelly said she would like a personal homepage for information that she doesn't like having her badges show up in every time she comments. That is possibly what we're going to because some of you have 30 badges. <laughs> so Kelly, good suggestion. Jeannie, jot that down. Um, someone's asking if the slingshot will include Shakespeare. Maybe. I don't know if that's slated yet, but it's certainly possible. Um, so what would you use to teach a beginning reader? So the wand is great. We partner with Rooted in Language, Rita Savasco's company, and she has a program called Pinwheels that is for brand new readers that's going to be starting up this year. And I'm going to be talking more about that on July 1st. And she's the designer of the wand. So it's pinwheels and then the wand. And we're going to have a big, juicy conversation about that. So just hang in there. I will get back to you at the start of July. Uh, but if you are at the very, very beginning stages, check out rootedinlanguage.com. The July offer will also be a lifetime membership. That's all we're doing this year is lifetime memberships to the Brave Learner Home. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yes, you will be able to see and buy slingshots starting in January 21. That's correct. How would I assess if my almost 10-year-old could handle the arrow? I recommend thinking about it this way. First, look at the book lists. Do the books look like books you would be comfortable reading with your child? So that's the first level. The second level is how comfortable is your child with handwriting? If they hate it and they're like this about handwriting, the dart is a better level for handwriting. However, if your child loves the arrow books, go ahead and buy the arrows and just shorten the passages for copy work and dictation. And we do talk about that in the guidelines. Will you speak to multiple ages? Yes, in the Brave Learner Home, we will have webinars that will address different ages. Let's see. Do you recommend buying different levels for children that span all three? When I had five children, the way I did it is I aimed for the middle and I made it a little more challenging for the older kids and a lot less challenging for the younger ones. So if it were me and I had five kids ranging from like 13 down to let's say age, I don't know, seven, I'd get the arrow and everybody would do it. And then for my oldest child, I might say, okay, once a week, you're going to pick your own copy work from one of the books you're reading, and we'll add that to what we're doing. But I would want to read one book aloud to all five kids. The only time I recommend dividing them up is if you've got like a 15-year-old and a six-year-old. They aren't going to want to listen to the same books. So then you might want to do like one for the older bunch and one for the younger bunch and alternate months because sometimes doing two at once is too much. So you could do the upper level one month and the lower level the next month. You'd be shocked at how perfectly acceptable that is. 
I have done many webinars on our writing programs and there will always be more. Something that you should know is in July, we do a free summer camp where we go over Brave Writer programs in great detail and that is free. So we'll be promoting that soon and then you can sign up for those webinars and you'll get a walkthrough of every single thing we offer. Summer camp is really fun and we give a, a camp guide to your kids so they have things to do. Uh, and we even have reading aloud happening during summer camp this year for your kids. So it'll be a fun year. Okay, well, let me just make one last glance here. Uh, one last question. I was going to buy the dart. My daughter just turned six and it's just starting to want to learn to read. I would like the one once it's revised next year. Now I'm confused what to buy. Okay, here's what I would recommend to someone who's just turned six. I think that if they have not learned to read yet or are just learning to read, you could purchase the dart to get in on this deal and buy Jot It Down as your original writing program and then find a phonics program that you like. So you might do pinwheels with Rooted in Language or you might pick something else that is your favorite program. But the wand is for kids who are already reading a little bit. It's not a from scratch program. So if she is just at the beginning. Pick a phonics program, buy the dart, because you'll want to read those books to her and you'll be able to use it at any point, like whenever it starts clicking over for her to do some handwriting practice. Um, and then jot it down for the original writing, which doesn't require reading at all. Oh, Erin, you're so nice. Who influenced your heart to be such a beautiful thing? Oh. Uh, let me let me end on that note, and let me say, I, I mean, I appreciate you saying it's beautiful, but let me end on the note of why. Why is Brave Writer being stru structured this way? Why are we doing this? I think bottom line is, I remember being a homeschooler, and I remember what I wanted and needed. And the business of Brave Writer is very healthy. We have an amazing, talented, dedicated team of people who are mission-minded. I mean, you should see the amount of research they do for their jobs that I don't assign. The level of dedication they bring to the task that has nothing to do with pay or time off or at a girls, they work because all of us have sat in the seat you're in. You know how when you're a young woman, you wish you had a mentor who was an older woman? to help you with breastfeeding and baby rearing and parenting. And instead we just keep pooling our ignorance, all the 30 somethings talking to the 30 somethings. So by the time I got to the age where I was no longer a 30 or 40 something, it just feels natural and the greatest joy to be a part of the next generation's success. Homeschooling is home brewed. We are building a movement that is set to change the course of learning, we are making a contribution back into the story of education as a collective. And I just don't wanna hoard it. And it's not really about monetizing it. We make plenty off of our classes and our programs. We try to price them fairly. We want to compensate the team. They work really hard. But the coaching piece for me, it's like listening to a radio show. You know, great example is like listening to Dave Ramsey. He shares his wisdom freely every day on the radio. And then people buy his books and sign up for his financial university and hire his consultants. But the coaching is free. It's, it's the gift he makes back into the space because of how well the space has rewarded him for having something to say. And that's literally how I feel about what we're doing. This is my radio show. This is our our ability to give back based on all that has been given to us. And honestly, I hope it's the future of business. You know, why build on the tech company model that just ramps it up and sells it for a high price and gives away, you know, the company to other people. I, I've actually, for the first time, had, I had someone reach out to me who's interested in buying their way into the home education space and wanted to look at Brave Rider. And I was like, ah, that's not who we are. It's not where we are. But that's the model that's out there. So we're trying to do something different and we're testing it this year to see if it's what you wanted and if it works for Brave Rider. And if it does, then we'll keep going. 
because, you know, it's a work of love. It's not just paying bills. We love you guys. All right. Have a fabulous sunny weekend. I hope that you can spend it with the people you love despite the COVID-19 frightening scare. You know, do what you need to to be safe, to be with your people, to enjoy the weather wherever you are, and just know that we're rooting for you all the time. And we welcome your suggestions and we thank you for spreading the word because that's how we can sustain this. It's through the virality of what we offer being valuable to you and we work hard at it. So thank you. Have a fabulous, fabulous weekend.